trust Chesney. What do you care? Well, I know what it's like to have three people in a relationship. No. It was only Tyrone plus one. And that wasn't you. We won't be plus anyone after next week. You reckon? You are so flaming deluded. How's that then? Tyrone will never be alone. We're closer and stronger than ever. Your lies are never going to change that, no matter what happens in court. We both know what's going to happen. Fine. So he goes to prison. When he comes out, I'll be waiting. You? What have you got to look forward to? I won't be wasting my life on prison visits. No. No, you won't be seeing anyone. You'll be all alone, because no man could stand living with you. I'm going to love it when he gets sent down next week. I'm sure you will. But enjoy the buzz while you can, love. Because it might have to last a long time. She looks happy enough. Well, even Ruby can't cry all day. She gives it a good go, mind. Are you sure you're right to take her? Oh, it's our pleasure. I should only be a couple of hours. It's just a meal with my mum. Take all the time you need. Thanks. I heard the girls are going down the bistro. I hope you haven't ducked out oh, on my account. No, no. They can keep their full Monty. I doubt there's any even measure up to my Brian. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, well, the nappy bag's there. Should be everything in there. And I've got my phone on me. Stop so. worrying. Have a good night. You deserve it. Thanks. Bye. Where have you been? Oh, the meeting over, Run. Huh? We got into a heated debate over the next school production. But I commend Mrs. Luckett's ambition, but uh, she'd have year two doing death of a salesman for letter. Are you all right? Do I look it? <laughs> She's been crying non-stop for the last hour. How come we've got to... Kirsty's taking her mum out for the night. Maybe you should give her a rest. Certainly not. If anybody deserves a bit of respite, it's that poor girl. We can manage. Oh, can we? Yes. We'll uh, take Ruby for a drive around and hopefully I'll send her off. You, you don't need me to come, surely? But look at me. I'm enough it's take to drive. I've not eaten since dinner time. There's only a ham baguette between me and starvation. Get in. Says you, who no doubt put away a cream slice at four o'clock this afternoon. I don't want to make you more racket. Child of my stomach. Oh, she must be teething. She's the right age. Maybe she wants something to chew on. Oh, never mind about her. I want something to chew on. If she needs anything, it's her mother. Now, give her a call. I promise that everything will be all right. It's not our fault. She's nigh on hysterical and I'm not far behind. Hi, Kirsty. Hi, it's Julie. Yeah, everything's fine. Um, it's just Ruby's a little bit grouchy. I wonder when you might be home. There's been a bit of a problem, I'm afraid. Um, Mum was taking ill at the restaurant. No, it's nothing life-threatening, just tummy trouble, but she is in quite a bad way. Thanks, Julie, I'll pass it on. It. Uh, thing is, um... She could really do with someone to stay with her to make sure she's all right. Uh, well, I wouldn't ask, but could you keep hold of Ruby? It's just uh, I've no one else to turn to. It's fine. 
no, we'd be happy to have Ruby for the night. No, 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 I insist. But you stay there and look after your mum. We'll drop Ruby over in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Bye. What in God's name? I've got to go to work tomorrow. I'll be face down in my Cheerios after a night like this. What choice did I have? Her mother has been taken ill in the restaurant. She has to stay with her. It's taking advantage, is this? I am a superhead and I need my sleep. Kirsty needs us more and we will not be letting her down. Yeah, well, I could have been in there. Mm. First thing that went through my head? Not just yours. I had about 100 texts. Gary, is there? Anna, Owen. People care about you. I know. Yeah, we have. What do you want? He's chasing. Okay, yeah? Can I go in for a second? Yeah, go on then, but he's not at work because of you, so you better not upset him anymore. No, I won't. Hey, Chaz. Hiya. You all right? Hard bad days. Have you seen the Rovers? Have you just come round for a chat? I was just wondering if you wanted to see Josie. What does that mean, see him? Are you going to wheel him past the house in his buggy? No, I... I, no, I mean, I, I could bring him round if you want. You, you could stay. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like that. I'd really like that. I'll miss him. I'll have him any time you like. I'll bring him round later then. What time? I don't mind. How about lunchtime? Seeing as he's not working. Okay. Thanks. I'll see you later. Yeah. Bye. You kicking off your blanket, are you a bit hot? How come you've got Ruby? It's none of your business. She's Tyrone's daughter. And she's in safe hands. Kirsty had to stay at her mum's last night. Last night? Yes, last night. But well, she didn't stay at her mum's last night because I saw her in a window and the pub was on fire. Oh, no, I don't think so. You must be mistaken. No, I'm not mistaken. I saw her. I, saw... I told Tommy. Look, I know you're on Tyrone's side, but just think, hey, you could be wrong. I'm not wrong. You're wrong. She's a dangerous, manipulative bully and she's lying to you, Julie. She's the victim here. <laughs> the truth will come out in court. Well, I hope it does. It just might not be the truth that you want to hear. Ask her. Go on, ask her where she was last night. I don't really appreciate it. There's just one thing. Yeah? Can I ask you a question? Of course you can. Oh, do you know what? Don't worry about it. I better get back. Brian's expecting me. I think we'll get an early night tonight. Yeah, OK. Do you want something? I'd like to know what's going on. In your head. Need a crack team of psychiatrists to work that one out. What happened last night? Whoever's bent down, next question. He told Julie we were looking after your mum and I saw you in your window. What's your point? My point is, she's supposed to be your friend and you're lying to her. I don't have to answer to you. <laughs> no, but you're transferring court next week. I've got to go. OK. I'm fine. Look, please, tell the truth. If you can't cope, you I'll need see you in court. Help. I've put everything in his bag. Look, I can cope. I know you can. Look, whatever happens between us, Kate... You'll always be his dad. The best dad he could ever have. <laughs> well, there's no need to come pick him up. I'll drop him off before work tomorrow. Oh, OK. About 8.30? Yeah, that's fine. I'll best call him. See ya. Yeah, see ya. Roy, the thing is, I can't be sure how long the trial's gonna last. I might need the whole week off. From what I've heard, he could get sent down on the first day. Still, at least, you won't lose out on any of your wages. Oh, well, Mother, could you show a little sensitivity? Oh, she don't mind. She's used to standing by a man in the dock. And she's not in the dock herself, that is. <laughs> you take as long as you need. We shall manage, despite the fact that my mother is fast becoming more of a liability than an employee. Thanks, Roy. I appreciate it. I'll get on. And I know that risk's still giving you jip. Can't you get her to take a break? My mother is a force of nature. You might as well ask the wind to stop blowing. Yeah, okay, well, she's going to blow herself out if she carries on like this. I was just, uh, just reminded me of Blanche, you know, when she did a hip in. 
Honestly, she was unbearable. My dad and Deirdre had to have her in the house 24 hours a day. I mean, at least, you know, when she were mobile, she could get out to the one o'clock club, give them a bit of peace and quiet. Well, that's it. That's what Sylvia needs. A distraction, something to get her out and about the one o'clock club. I don't think my mother would fit it. I think she'd love it. I will. <laughs> what is it you want from me, eh? <laughs> I'll fetch her. I'll change her. I don't know what else to do. Sometime. Do you not like it here? Or is it, is it me you don't like? OK. You don't like me? Let's find somebody you do like. <laughs> Hi, listen, I'm really sorry, but could you do me the most enormous favour? I need someone to have Ruby for the night. It's a family emergency. I'm really sorry, love. I can't. It's just that Paul's having a tough time, you know, after the fire. But why don't you ask Julie? I'm sure she could help. Oh, yeah. No, it's OK. It doesn't matter. Sorry. Are you OK? Oh, yeah. I'm fine. I'll sort it away. Thanks. He must be devastated. I just don't know what to say. Sometimes you don't need to say anything. You just need to be there. I forget how dangerous his job is. I mean, I think of him just polishing his fire engine and rescuing cats from trees. You forget that people die. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. We had Ruby for Kirsty last night, and what with all the noise, none of us got much sleep. You had Ruby last night? Yeah. Well, I had Kirsty around here this afternoon asking if I'd take her. Really? Yeah, she was a bit, I don't know, jittery. Is she all right? Oh, it's bound to be a strain, isn't it? The trial starts next week. I'd best go and see if she's all right. Sounds like everybody's suffering, eh? Lifesaver. If you could entertain Ruby for a bit, then maybe I could get some jobs done. Of course I can. <coughs> Hello. Uh, you're me a beautiful girl. You know, it's amazing how quickly things get on top of you when you've got a baby 24-7. Welcome to the world of a single mum. Well, you're not on your own. You can call on me any time you like. Thank you. I, I do appreciate that. <clears throat> I think uh, Aline was a bit worried she'd let you down. Aileen? She said you'd call round earlier to see if she'd take Ruby for the night. Right. Like I said, if you're struggling... You can come to us any time. I'm not struggling. Well, I didn't mean that. You meant I couldn't cope. Well, you said yourself it's not easy. No, it's not. And it doesn't help you going round telling the whole street I'm a bad mother. I've never said anything like that. I'm struggling. I can't cope. Well, I can cope. So do you know what? Why don't you go back off home for your early night with Brian? Because I'm fine. Here, let me take her. No, there's no need. No, no, it's all right. Me and Ruby are fine on our own, because that's how it's going to be from now on, isn't it? You get off, eh? Well, if you're sure, I, I, I didn't mean to upset you. I'm not upset. Just, I'm, I'm getting used to how it's going to be. Like I said, we'll be fine on our own, won't we, eh? OK. Hey? I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, if you want. Night, Ruby. You'll have to take us as you find us. Oh, don't be daft. It's homely. <laughs> Been playing with Rubes last track of time. Hello, beautiful. You are a lucky girl. <laughs> and if I implied otherwise, I am Oh, shocked. it's me that should be apologising. I think the stress of today was starting to get to me. It's forgotten. You're a great mum. A born natural. I get by. You sure you're OK to mind her today? Oh, of course I am. I thought you were going to ask someone else. Oh. We have fun, don't we, sausage? Well, I better get myself looking respectable. 
It wouldn't matter if you turned up in a bin bag. You've got the truth on your side, remember? Now, rule number one. Do not let them blooming barristers intimidate you. I know they're better educated and they've got a string of letters behind the name, but that does not make them better people. Of course not. They put them wigs on, they think they're it. <laughs> barristers, barristers. There must be a cracking coffee-based joke in there somewhere, Ken. Uh, not now, Brian. No. Good luck, uh, young Kirsty. Thank you. Say bye-bye to Mummy. Wish wish her luck. I'm doing this for us. How are you doing? I'll be glad when it's over. Well, once the day's out of the way, it'll be plain sailing. Just sit back and let justice take its course. Oh, just about. <laughs> what are you doing? Logging anything significant. Right. I am a member of the Big Society. Society of Big Noses. I have a civil duty to be here, and unlike some, I have brought an open mind. Good. Because he's innocent. A distinct possibility. Court rise. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please do not be taken in by the affable Grease Monkey Act. Tyrone Dobbs is a shrewd, calculating man and a consummate performer. Having subjected Kirsty Soames to a number of violent attacks, he mounted a fake charm offensive. He fooled Kirsty Soames into believing he was a reformed character who wanted only to live happily ever after in wedded bliss. In reality, he had long tired of his girlfriend. All he really wanted was parental rights over their daughter. Power. Isn't that what every bully craves? Miss Grimshaw. How long have you known Tyrone Dobbs? Uh, about 10 to 12 years. And you've lived next door to him all that time? Yes. So you've shared a party wall with Mr. Dobbs during his marriage to the late Molly Dobbs and during his relationship with the complainant, Kirsty Soames? Yes. And what kind of neighbour has he been? How do you mean? Have you enjoyed a good relationship with him? Well, I thought so up until now. Up until now, being the night of July the 13th, 2012. Yeah, it was a real eye-opener. An eye-opener, members of the jury. Miss Grimshaw, are you keeping something from us? A superpower, perhaps? By day, a switchboard operative, and by night, an ability to see through brick walls. I know what I heard. You think you know. You pieced together the sound effects and painted a picture in your mind, surely. Is it possible that on the night of July the 13th last year, it was Kirsty Soames doing the smashing? And Miss Grimshaw, given that you lack a superpower, do you concede that it's possible that Kirsty Soames was the one hurling objects? I suppose so. Did you hear a female screaming or the sound of somebody being threatened? Did you rush next door to check if everything was okay? Well, no, but I did mention it to Tyrone's mate the next day. You mentioned it to a mate the next day? Yes, Tommy Duckworth. And did you make a beeline for this Tommy? I bumped into him outside the newsagent. Thank you. No further questions.
Practice Barlow. On the afternoon of Monday the 6th of August 2012, you were walking your dog down the ginnel of Coronation Street, is that correct? Yes. Would you please describe the events of that afternoon to the members of the jury? I'd heard uh, Kirsty and Tyrone arguing earlier on. I was going out with Eccles, the, the dog, and uh, well, they were still at it when I came back. Can you remember specifically what was said? She was saying that he needed to calm down. She said, you need to calm down and we need to talk. And she was pleading with him. He was up in mad. How so? She said they needed to keep talking and he was shouting, I should knock you across the yard. I couldn't believe it. I should knock you across the yard. Shocking stuff. Well, it was just so nasty, so unlike Tyrone. How you think you've got the measure of somebody? <laughs> what a smash of stupid glasses. What happened next? Well, there was a terrible crash, and I heard Kirsty yell out in pain, and then it all went quiet. So I dashed round to their yard, and Kirsty was lying on the floor with her head bleeding, and Tyrone was standing over her. And then what happened, Mrs. Barlow? Well, I rang Dr. Carter. I'm in the medical profession, and you can't risk it with the head. Kirsty said she'd fallen over and caught it on a plant pod, but I had a funny feeling about it. I said to Ken later, I've got a funny feeling about it. And what was giving you this funny feeling? I don't know, really. There was just something not right. I mean, Tyrone seemed fine once he knew the baby was OK. In fact, I remember him asking Dr Carter if he wanted a Jaffa cake. I mean, one minute he's walloping his pregnant girlfriend and the next he's going on about biscuits. And then later on in the Rovers, he was sinking a pint. When did you realise that your gut instinct was spot on? When he pushed her down the stairs in January. It was only when Kirsty fell out of love with him that she was able to, to come forward and, and tell us all what had been happening. Which was? That he'd been battering her for months. And cheating on her. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. In labour. But Mr. Dobbs wasn't answering his phone. Just kept going on to voicemail. I couldn't believe it. Did you confront him about it? He flipped. He threw, um... I realise this is painful for you, Miss Soames. He, um... threw the steak and chips I cooked against the wall and smashed a vase of flowers. He slapped me around the back of the head. Hit me up against the sink. Oh, that was you that did that. She's twisting it. Sit down, Mr. Dobbs. Did you ever get to the bottom of Mr. Dobbs' whereabouts on the afternoon you thought you were going into labour? Eventually, yeah. He admitted he'd been round at Fizzers but swore blind he was doing some DIY for a mate. Remind the court, Miss Soames, how pregnant were you at this point? Seven months. Seven months. No further questions. Why, when you were so terrified of Mr. Dobbs, when you'd spent your days treading on eggshells, why bring your baby home to such a dangerous man? I didn't think he'd do anything to hurt Ruby. It was a risk you were prepared to take. I wasn't exactly spoke for choice. Why did you leave Tyrone Dobbs off the birth certificate? I didn't know how things would pan out. So you left him off as a sort of insurance policy. A get-out-of-jail card, in case he was an unfit father. Whatever you want to call it. But you let him give up his job to become daddy daycare, with full-time responsibility for Ruby. I was under orders. He told me I had to work full-time while he stayed at home with Ruby. End of. He sounds like a controlling monster. You said it. Yet, when he proposed, you bit off his arm. No pun intended. You've told us the part of you still loves him. Would that be the guilty part of you? I'm guilty of keeping the faith with him for too long. 
Isn't it the case that in all those three occasions, you were the aggressor? No. We've had these so-called eyewitness accounts who time and time again missed the money shot. They heard the before, they saw the after, and they swallowed your lies wholesale. He's on trial here. Isn't it the case that you were the one who hurled the steak and chips? That you whacked him around the head? That you routinely beat Mr. Dobbs and savagely shut his arm in the door? No. Come on, Miss Soames. This is your chance to tell the truth. I stayed loyal. He battered me black and blue when all I did was love him. Fresh air at last. Yeah, well, you were great. Defence made mince meat of me. Kirsty! Uh, you guys go ahead. I'll join you in a bit. So he threw me walking in like that. I nearly lost it. What blurted out the truth, you mean? Keep your voice down. I've been hoping and praying you'd do the right thing. How could you be so brazen? Oh, go home. I don't want you here. Of course you don't. I know the truth. Tyrone's no angel. He pretended he wanted to marry me just to get Ruby. Desperate measures, that's what you've driven him to. And now you lied on oath. Won't be the first. I'm ashamed of you. Right back at you. You just stood there while she banged nails into Tyrone's car. Please do the right thing, Mrs. Solms. You know the truth. Make her see sense. If she gets away with this, Ruby's going to be stuck with her forever. Can you imagine being brought by that? Why don't you invest in a little jotter and work out your best bus routes to prison? You'll slip up. I had three of the jurors blubbing into the handy handies. I think my, I'm still in love with him, Your Honor. Backed him at least another two years. You can't do this, Kirsty. You can't send an innocent man to prison. Watch me. I sit here. I'm surprised you can bear to be in the same room as me when you think what I've done is so terrible. I am shocked by how well you lied. In a courtroom. I'd have been terrified. <laughs> you were in a wire. Even when the questions got awkward, you still kept up the pretense, played the victim. And yes, I think what you did is terrible. But I am still your mother. to live with the guilt the rest of your life if Tyron goes to prison. He's a liar and you cheat. He deserves what's coming to him. Is that how you justify it to yourself? <laughs> if you're not on my side, you're on his, so... <laughs> your mind up. <laughs> All this anger and hatred is eating you up. I feel lost, Mum. Some days I don't want to get out of bed. I can't face the world. I feel like I'm losing control. I don't know what to do, who I'm going to turn to. Turn to me. Can I? I can move in with you. Dad, I'll leave him again for good. It won't be easy. But it's time I was a proper mum to you. Proper grandmother to Ruby. Yeah? You'd have to do something for me, though. What? You might be able to live with a wrongful conviction on your conscience. I can't. I see. You'd have to go back to the police. I've already given my evidence. Not the truth. I'll be the one who ends up in prison if I do. I lied in court. They'll be lenient, I'm sure of it. Then we really can make a fresh start. So this massive change of heart, this wonderful new life you're offering, it comes with strings attached. We can't make a fresh start with it hanging over us. We need to wipe the slate clean. You won't leave him! leave him when I was nine and he was knocking ten bells out of us. Any other mother would have walked out then. You didn't. And you won't do it now. Don't come back to the house. Don't bother coming out at all. You're not welcome. Dr. Carter, did Miss Soames have an appointment with you on the morning that she sustained her head injury? That's correct. But on entering the surgery, she made an excuse and left. I believe so, yeah. Later that day, you were called out to Miss Soames's address? I was, yeah. Mr. Dobbs was also present, is that correct? Yes. Could you describe his mood? 
He seemed edgy. What did Miss Soames say was the reason that she'd obtained her head injury? She said she slipped. Was Miss Soames's injury consistent with her complaint? They were. Did she say anything else about her injuries? Uh, she kept on telling me she was fine, even though she was clearly distressed. I got the impression she wanted rid of me. I didn't want to pry, but on reflection, perhaps I should have. What sort of contact did you have with the defendant and Miss Soames as their GP? Not very much, actually. They were quite private. There was one incident which, uh, looking back, did seem a little odd. In what way? Uh, Mr. Dobbs came to see me with Ruby. He was worried. How old was Ruby? Uh, two weeks old. Did the defendant have an appointment? No, he just arrived in reception. He seemed quite agitated, so I agreed to see him straight away. What did he say was his reason for bringing the baby to see you? He was worried she might have been hurt. Did he give an explanation for how this might have happened? Yeah, he said the pram had collapsed. He hadn't got the hang of folding it or unfolding it yet. Did you examine the baby? I did. Did you find evidence of injury? None. Did the defendant say anything else about the incident? He kept on blaming himself. But once we'd established that the baby was fine, he closed down the conversation and left. Again, I wonder if I should have asked him some more questions. But he was eager to leave. No further questions, Your Honour. What the hell are you doing here? Keep your voice down. I'll just put Ruby in a car. Why are you in my house? Because Julie had to run an errand. She asked me if I'd look after the baby. It was an emergency. I'm only trying to help. Get out of my house. You should be grateful. I got her off to sleep. Oh, well, it's a step up from helping people trying to snatch her, I suppose. Now, hang on a minute. Why are you still here? I told you to get out. Out. You did brilliantly, though. Well, at least it's all over and done with. Not for Tyrone, it isn't. Your life could send him down for years. Deirdre is not a liar. Look, it pains me to say this, and I'm as shocked as anybody with the things we heard in there, but the case against Tyrone is completely compelling. She's playing you all for fools, and you can't see it. Let's get you. Tyrone! Tyrone! I love you. Anyway, I told them they could shove it. Can you stop being so macho? You've been through an awful ordeal. I do not need counselling. Well, there's only so much that I can do, Paul. You know, you've been great. I told you they laid me off as well. Well, that's even more reason to go and see this person, get you from under my feet. Listen, I am a firefighter. This stuff is just part of the job. Please, of... just give it a try. Hmm? I was caught. Awful. Poor woman. <laughs> Back. Yes. And she wasn't best pleased to see me babysitting. Oh, have I dropped you in here? I'm the last person she wanted anywhere near Ruby. She practically threw me out. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Sally. I'll go and talk to her. I'm back. How did it go? Where have you been? Oh, Brian had a mini crisis at the school. I had to pop up there. So you left Ruby with Sally Webster? Well, thank goodness you could help. Everybody else was at court. So come on. How was it? Yeah, pretty awful, actually. Oh, I can imagine. I've been thinking about you all day. I mean, to relive it all. Lawyers picking over every detail. They really put me through the ringer, making me look like a liar. Oh, oh dear. My mum was there. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? She never said that she was coming. She just turned up. I haven't seen her for months. Really? We just argued. She made me feel worse. Desolate. Alone. And then I come home to find Sally Webster looking after my baby. And it wasn't long ago that she helped Tyrone kidnap her. I mean, can you imagine what was running through my mind? I mean, what are you doing, Julie? It was an emergency. You're the one person! 
I thought I could trust. Oh, but of course you can trust me. You're in charge. You should have left. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done that. I'm really sorry. It's should... fine. It's fine. You, you've had a really stressful day. Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. My stupid antics haven't helped. I'll, uh, I'll get a dustpan and brush. Where do you keep it? Look, I know you didn't mean any harm. I'm sorry, Julie, I'm really... I broke a glass yesterday. These little shards get everywhere. I don't want Ruby cutting herself. Chesney is. I feel like I've been neglecting him. Hey, how did it go? Well, if uh, the jury think like Ken Barlow does, then Tyrone's done for. Why, was he a witness? No, Deirdre was, but Ken was in the gallery and he made it quite clear he thought that Tyrone were guilty. Well, it's a good job he's not on the jury then, isn't it? Yeah, well, Kirsty gave the jury an Oscar winning performance. A scheming cow. Even when Ty's barrister started to grill her, it still didn't knock her off a stride, did it, Ailey? Nope. She was totally convincing. Surely they've got to see through her. And if they don't... At last. Hi. <sighs> hey, what's this? <clears throat> Champagne truffles. <laughs> There's only eight. Just a small thank you for coming to my rescue today. <laughs> Not that the uh, school improvement partner you've noticed I was there. He spent most of the afternoon wittering on about his new conservatory. Oh. Did you get back to Kirsty's okay? Yeah. How did she get on? It was quite traumatic, I think. Well, go on then, I'll have one. Oh, help yourself. <laughs> I love the smell of Belgian chocolate. The waft when you open the box. Are you all right? Oh, I can't lie and I can't bottle it up. There was an incident earlier at Kirsty's. An incident? She was really upset with me for leaving Ruby with Sally. Oh, I did fear that might not go down too well. Oh, it was like all the anger that's built up over the last few months came spilling out. That'd be a release after standing up in court, I suppose. Brian, I was scared. She really lost it. Oh, sweetheart. I mean, you should have seen the look in her eyes. It made me wonder what she's capable of. What do you mean? Oh, I keep trying to put it out of my mind, but the more I think about it... What? I've got this horrible feeling that we've all been duped. What if we've got it wrong? What if Tyrone is the innocent party and she's the violent one? Is that credible? He's a mechanic. You'd think he'd be able to handle himself. I know. It sounds ridiculous, I know. I've broken crockery in anger. Oh, don't I know it? But this was different. And she lied about the last time she saw her mother. A barefaced lie. If you think you've really got it wrong, then you must tell someone. Who? The police, Tyrone's sister. I don't know, but this is a massive development. <sighs> Oh, I could have got it wrong. I know I'm not going to sleep tonight now. I'm not after this. Then you must do something. I will. I'm going to confront her. Demand that she tells me the truth. If she's fooled us all, then she must be a pretty good liar. Well, I am a brilliant lie detector. My instincts are never wrong. Trust me, Brian. I will get to the bottom of this. I was banking on her not being able to go through with it. I mean, to stand up in court and lie. It takes some bottle. She's played a blinder, you have to admit it. However emotive her testimony appears, it was still fabrica still fabrication. Backed up by witnesses and a doctor. The jury believed every word. The jury haven't heard your version of events. And when they do, they'll see Miss Soames' testimony for what it is. No pressure there, then. The jury hear both sides, and they weigh it up. And when they do, I'm confident they'll come to the right conclusion. Well, I'm not. My advice to you is to try and get a good night's sleep. You've got a big day ahead of you. Your day in court. Your chance to let the jury hear the truth. I'm going to prison. I know I am. We may as well face it. I need to make an appointment to see Dr. Carter. It's Kirsty Soames. No, I need to see him today. It's... It's urgent. This is a mate, and I'm gutted for my really arm. I'd be looking forward to that meal all week. 
And I blew off my wages on a new top. I'll take you out tonight instead. Really? Have I ever let you down? Mm, well, don't spoil a good moment, then. Eh? All right. Yeah, I'm just waiting for my taxi. Going to court again? It's Tyrone's turn on the stand today. So the jury will hear the truth at last. How's it bearing up? What do you care? I thought you were on Kirsty's side. Oh, nobody's side me. In fact, I'd make a good juror. See you later. Bye. I'll go and see Kirsty after this. I've been thinking. Is this a good idea? And she, she nearly hit you yesterday. If you go around making accusations... I'll be subtle. What? I can do subtle. You're a wonderful woman, Julie. Passionate, caring, strong. And if there was ever anyone I wanted to fight my corner, it'd be you. But you're also impetuous, stubborn, and like a bull in a china shop, and I am worried sick at the thought of something happening to you. So please, don't do this. Mother, what, what, what are you doing? I'm washing up. <laughs> you have to use quite so much. Look at it. Yes, I know. Oh, isn't it pretty? Look at all the colours. It's like rainbow land. <laughs> are you all right? Yes, I'm wonderful. Oh, I'm just wonderful. Oh, oh. see the colours, how they sparkle. <laughs> well, it's like Jan and John, isn't it? Look, Roy, look. See how the colours sparkle. <laughs> Wait, we should buy some proper bubbles. That's what we should do. Good idea. Yeah, we should blow them all round the cafe, brighten the place up. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Brighten you up a bit. Oh, look, Roy, look. See how they sparkle. See how they pop. I don't know what's got into her. I've got a fair idea. <laughs> I've not been sleeping very well with the court stuff going on. No, I'm sure. And I've been really to look after as well. Oh, can your family help out? My family aren't exactly big on support. What about your friends? I think you can count on them, but when it comes to the crunch... I'm not saying I can't manage on my own. No, no, I'm sure. I mean, we're fine, me and Ruby. It's just I need a decent night's sleep, that's all. Well, have you talked to anyone? I mean, I can recommend some really good counsellors. I don't need to talk to anyone. I just need something to make me sleep. <laughs> yeah, sleeping pills are really a, a last resort. It's best if we deal with the problem there, there isn't a problem there. Are you going to give me a prescription or not? Yeah, I really think we should Do you know it. what? Forget it. I thought you were supposed to help people. I'm trying to. You're just like everyone else. Please, sit down. Can they patronise some more? No, thanks. I swear by almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You can do it, Ty. Can you tell the court your full name, please? Tyrone Sylvester Dobbs. Mr. Dobbs, you're here because you've been charged with assaulting Miss Soames on several occasions. I never laid a finger on her. She's the one who's been assaulting me. And when did you first meet Miss Soames? September 2011. Can you describe your relationship in the early stages? Yeah, um, we was dead happy together. She seemed loving and caring. I was over the moon when she agreed to move in. When did the relationship change? When she lost her job. See, she was a policewoman. It was everything to her. She couldn't handle it. Got depressed and angry and she took it out on me. How did she take it out on you? She shouted at me and... She hit me across the face with a ladle. She cut me a... How did you react when it happened? I was shocked. It wasn't like her. I just put it down to a depression. She was sorry about it afterwards and, and we just moved on. Did it happen again? A few weeks later, I invited her mum and dad to a birthday party. Her and her dad ended up rowing. She blamed me for it. So she slammed me into the wall. She bruised all my face. See, that's what she was like. If she felt put down by someone, she'd make herself feel better by putting me down. Were there any other times when you were hurt by Miss Soames? Yeah, plenty. She'd throw stuff at me or, or hit me with stuff. Once it was the pipe off the hoover, left marks on my back. Did anybody see the mark? Yeah, 
my mate Tina. Did you on any occasion seek medical help? Yeah. Um, once she trapped my arm in the door. She kept slamming the door shut on it. I went to the hospital and they x-rayed it. Your Honour, the agreed evidence of the doctor's report reveals the injuries to have been severe bruising. From what you've been saying, you have been the victim of regular sustained abuse from Miss Soames over a period of about 10 months. Yet, when friends told people about what was happening, you denied it. Why was that? Because I was scared of what she'd do to me if I didn't. And because I was ashamed. I thought people would laugh at me. Think I was pathetic. I mean, a bloke being beat up by a woman. People joke about it, don't they? Well, they wouldn't. Not if they knew what it was really like. Let's move to the 21st of January, the day you were supposed to be getting married. Miss Soames alleges that after you returned home, you had a row, which culminated in you pushing her down the stairs and rendering her unconscious. No, I didn't push her at all. Can you describe the events leading up to the fall? We'd agreed to split up. I asked if she'd let me take Ruby with me, but she wouldn't. Why did you want to take her? Because I was scared. I was scared Kirsty might hurt her like she hurt me. What happened next? I said I was going to take her anyway. I know that sounds harsh, but I just couldn't risk anything happening to her. So I went upstairs to get her. Kirsty pushed past me. She tried to hit me. I ducked out the way. She lost her balance and she just fell. Were there any other witnesses to this? No, the neighbours came round after it happened. You said before that you were scared that Kirsty might want to hurt your daughter. What made you think that this was a possibility? Well, she wasn't very good at coping. Not on her own, anyway. She admitted that. That's why I suggested that I stay home and she goes back to work. How did this manifest itself, this not coping? She shouted at her. Threw things across the room. This one time, she picked up a mobile off a pram and she threw it. Ruby was terrified. I was terrified. You see, I could cope with all the things she did to me. But the thought... The thought of her laying a finger on Ruby. That's why I stayed as long as I did, to protect her. Please, you've got to believe me. See, Ruby's only little. Everything I'm saying is true. And now I'm not there to look after her and she needs me. I'm scared of what might happen, please. She needs me. No further questions, Your Honour. So go on then. Tell me, where are you taking me tonight? Um. Or is it a surprise? Well. It is, isn't it? Aw, oh, you're dead romantic, you. The thing is, I, I thought maybe we could go tomorrow. Why? It's just... Chesney's gone and lost his stall on the market. He's gutted. He's asked me if we can go out for a drink. We're going to just have to let him down gently. I already said I would. Over my dead body? One night, fine. Two nights on a row? I don't think so. But, Beth... I'm not being unreasonable, am I? I've got to go. Hey? Tell the bosses um, I've got a toothache or something. What do you want? I've only just got Ruby now. I'm sorry, but this can't wait. It better be important. I've had the day for Mel. Oh, so is Tyrone, I suppose. What? Yesterday, I saw a side of you that I haven't seen before. An aggressive, nasty side. Oh, for God's sake, I just had a day in court. I was stressed out, and then I come home to find my child's been dumped on someone else. Your reaction was over the top. It wasn't normal. Oh, so, sorry. What, well, I'm crazy now, am I? No, I'm saying you're aggressive. And it's made me wonder if... If what? If you were the violent one and not Tyrone. Not you as well. I don't believe this. I thought you were my friend. I am. And I've stood by you, and, and I will always stand by you. I need you to be honest with me. Fire! You're just like the rest.
rest of them, you'd, you'd drop me like a hotcake if you knew. Knew? Knew what? The truth? I don't need this. Get out. You've been lying, haven't you? All along. Manipulating me. Manipulating everyone. While that poor man... <laughs> You know what I reckon? I reckon we should go round there and tell her that we know it's her hitting him. Call her bluff. You must be kidding. I'm not going back round there with that woman. Mm, maybe you're right. No, we have to go to court. We have to show them what she's done. I mean, if she's done this to me. Just goes to show, doesn't it? We need that sweet exterior. Oh, poor Tyrone. Oh, I feel terrible for not believing him. Well, don't worry about that now. We've got a trial to stop. <laughs> what was that? Listen. Ruby, stop crying. Why don't you sit down and eat it in here? All that running round, it's going to give you indigestion and it gets caught. Look, I know Tyrone's a friend of yours, but do you not think that it's going to be a bit too stressful for you? You know, standing up there. I've got no choice. Like you said, he's a friend. I'm going to do whatever I can to help. I know. You're a good girl. Anyway... No matter what any of us have to go through today, it's nothing what little Addy and Asher have to deal with. And Paul comes to that. Mm. And it's Tony's funeral today. Yeah. I, I saw him earlier outside the Rovers, just standing there, staring at the flowers. I, I, I was going to go over, but... Um... Oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. You know, after it happened, I couldn't get this thing out of my head. Imagine if I was in there when it caught on fire. I actually could have died. <laughs> I know. It comes as a shock to you, doesn't it, when you realise you're not mortal? OK. Now I'm anxious and depressed. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Listen, you're going to be fine. Yeah, and if you need anything, you call me. OK. Promise? Yeah. Thanks, Anna. Oh, hey. And watch that blood pressure. Kirsty? I can't hear the baby. Go and check upstairs. Me? Oh, for goodness sake, Sean. She won't answer. I'm not ringing her. Sorry, hello, yes, please, please. Fizz was my... Mrs. Stape was my friend. Well, come now, Mr. Dobbs, you were a little more than friends. No. She was someone that I could talk to, somebody that I could trust. And yet not someone that your fiancé approved of. Kirsty was jealous. With good cause, it would seem. Exactly when did you begin your affair with Mrs. Stape? Kirsty slammed my arm in the door. Could you just please answer the question? I'll narrow it down for you. How long before your wedding day did you begin your affair with Mrs. Stape? Mr. Dobbs? About five weeks. 
Kirsty was beating me. I didn't... And you reported this to whom? No one. You were being beaten, and yet you failed to report it. Indeed, in an encounter with your former friend Tom Duckworth, on the 30th of August 2012 at the Rovers Return Public House, you flatly denied it. Well, like I said, I was embarrassed. I didn't think anyone would believe me. Why didn't you just move out? I couldn't leave my daughter. So instead, five weeks before you're due to walk down the aisle, you embark on a relationship with another woman. I needed someone to talk to. Someone to tell what she was like. This was there for me. We fell in love. It was like I could breathe again. You fell in love. But isn't it also the case that while you were professing love for Mrs. Stape, you were also putting on quite a performance to convince Miss Soames that you were still deeply in love with her? It's a little dishonest, don't you think? I mean, some might say cruel. Oh, she's the one that's cruel. She's a liar. She humiliated me. She made me feel like I was nothing, like I wasn't even a man anymore. I hate her for that. She destroyed the life that I thought I was going to have. You don't hurt the people you love. No, Mr. Dobbs, you don't. But then you didn't love Kirsty Soames, did you? Thank you. That'll be all. She's in now. Oh, Brian. Oh. Do we know where she is? Maybe she's headed for the airport. <gasps> Ooh, we should get all the ports closed down. Sorry. But you're right. Action is most definitely needed. I should go to the court. I should tell them what she's really like. I owe Tyrone that much. What do you think? I think I'd like to wring that woman's neck what she did to you. But if getting Tyrone off is the legal way of dealing with her, any sign of her, call. Oh, huh? you don't think she'll come back here, do you? Maybe I should just go home. No, no, you've got to stay here, wait for the police, okay? Ready. Ready. Good luck. Excuse me. We need to speak to somebody. We have important information pertaining to a case. Yes, very important. Crucial. I'm sorry, but which case are you talking about? Tyrone Dobbs. He's on trial. As we speak. Court two. I'm sorry, but you can't go in there. It's in session. I don't think you understand, young lady. This person's evidence could prove to be of the utmost importance. Without it, an innocent man could go to prison. Name? Julie Carp. Wait over there. I'll see if I can get somebody to come and speak to you. Could you hurry, please? This is ridiculous. Tyrone's going to be in a cell getting changed into his convict's uniform before we get to see anybody. I think it's more tracksuits and t-shirts these days, but point taken. How much longer are we expected to... Uh... Sorry to keep you. Miss Carp? Yes. Uh, Brian Packham, Julius of the Half, head teacher at Bessie Street Primary. It's about the Tyrone Dobbs case. The woman who's accused him of violence. Miss Soames. She's attacked me. As you can see. She's had us all fooled. She's got us all to think that it was Tyrone who was hitting her when all the time she is the violent one. Oh, I should have known that he'd never hurt anybody. This shows what she's capable of. This proves that he's been telling the truth. It proves that Tyrone's innocent. I fully appreciate your concern. And from what you say, Miss Carp, it would certainly seem that you may have a case against Miss Soames. However, I'm afraid any violence that you may have suffered personally has no bearing on whether Mr. Dobbs is guilty of assaulting her. But that can't be right. She's attacked me. This proves that she's violent. And I suggest you consider filing a complaint with the police. I really am sorry, but I have to get back. But... Oh, I wish they'd hurry up. Hi. Do you live of your accidents? Come to support you, mate, have you? There's no need for that attitude. Uh, to answer your question, Ailey, Julie did not have an accident. She's the victim of violence. Uh, I know you're going to say I told you so and you, and you have every right. Uh, I was attacked by Kirsty. Well, I think that's what they call irony. I've told the lawyers. Yeah, it's too little too late now. I thought it might help Tyrone. Yeah, and what did they say? Well, un unfortunately, uh, 
What she's done to me doesn't prove that she's the one hurting Tyron. Fizz, I'm so sorry. I never should have doubted you. Do you think there's a reason, Hayley, that they've not called us back in? Oh, it'll be any minute now, and at least you'll be your friends in the witness box, eh? Yeah. Fizz. Look, Julie, I'm sorry, but I've got better things to do right now than worry about your conscience. She's only Ryan trying to... is fine. It's fine. I, I really hope things work out for Tyrone. Do you know the saying, one for the road, came from when prisoners were given a drink on their way to be executed? Mary? What? Oh, oh, don't worry. Even if he is found guilty, he's not headed for the gallows. Although, if you ask me, after his performance this morning, he did a pretty good job of tightening the noose around his own neck, in a manner of speaking. Well, here's an expression for you. If you haven't got anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Me and Tyrone used to be housemates. And why did that arrangement come to an end? Because she didn't like it. Miss Soames? Yeah. How did you feel about that? Well, I wasn't happy about it, put it that way. Is it fair to say that you didn't much like Kirsty Soames? I suppose so. Oh, yes or no is what's required, Miss Lavender. No, I didn't like her, no. Is that why you brought an allegation of harassment against her in January 2012? No, I said that because it was true. Yet you withdrew the allegation. Isn't that correct? Yeah, but for Tyrone, not for her sake. So did your relationship with Miss Soames improve after that? Not really, no. No, because isn't it the case that on September the 9th, you were involved in a skirmish at the Rover's Return public house with a heavily pregnant Miss Soames, which caused her to go into labour? Well, it was nothing. She didn't even report no, it. No, she did not because she was persuaded not to, under pressure, from you and the defendant. <laughs> You're making her out to be weak. Eh? Thank you, Miss McIntyre. Now, you claim that the defendant showed you some injuries. He did, yeah, when well, she battered him. You were witness to this alleged battering? No, but... So the fact of the matter is, you have no way of knowing how he sustained these injuries. Miss McIntyre, you have no way of knowing how Tyrone Dobbs sustained those injuries, have you? Well, no, not like you won. No, by your own admission, you have a history of animosity towards Miss Soames, isn't that right? I, I, I don't know what you... You've admitted, haven't you, that you're guilty of an assault against her? Yeah, but like I said, she's far from innocent. In fact, your whole evidence is merely supposition born out of animosity. Isn't that right, Miss McIntyre? What's she doing? Miss Soames. I must ask that you and your child leave court immediately. I need help. What have you done? Nothing. Nothing. Look, she's fine. Look. Miss Soames, you must leave court or I will have no but choice. I'm scared. I'm scared. What are you saying? What are you scared of? What I might do. That I might hurt her. I don't want to hurt her. I, I, I don't know what's happened to me. She needs to be with you. She needs to be with the daddy. No, please. No, please, just please. 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 Miss Soames, I insist you leave court now. My daughter needs to be with Tyrone. He'll look after her. He's not a monster. I am. Clear the court unless we have order. Take care of her, won't you? I love her so much. Mr Dobbs, you must hand the child over to the usher. No. No. She has to be with Tyrone. I need to know she's safe. Please, Your Honour, please. Tyrone, do it. No. No, 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 no. Order! Miss Soames, if you don't leave court now, I shall have you arrested for contempt of court. Get it the was court lies. Key. Everything I ever said about Tyrone, it was, it was, he never laid a finger on me. It was me. I was the one hitting him. I couldn't stop. I wanted to, but I couldn't stop. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I never meant any of it, I swear. I didn't want to hurt you. 
Please, you have to give Tyrone our baby back. He's innocent. Do you think they'll make her give evidence again? Well, they don't have to, do they? They've heard what she said. Oh, yeah. Tyrone's innocent. They haven't got a case against him. Really. Members of the jury, please leave court with the clerk. Now. See, she's the one that should be on trial. Quiet in the gallery. Please remove the child from court. No! No, you can't. You heard what she said. I'm innocent. I just want Mr. My... Dobbs, I would remind you that you are still on trial. Take him down to the cell. No! No! no. Tyrone. I did love you. Why? Are you sure you don't mind? Of course not. Come on, I'll make us a cup of tea. What's happened? I've been trying to call you. Sorry, my phone battery died. Well, how's Tyrone? We haven't convicted him, have they? Nope. He's doing all right, and so is baby Ruby. How do you know? Have you seen her? Mm, and her mother. You're not going to believe what happened. She walks into the courtroom. Kirsty? Mm hmm. Carrying the baby. Tina's up there giving evidence. And the next thing, all of a sudden, there she is. The judge tells her she's got to leave, but she turns around and said that she's made the whole thing up. It's a pack of lies, and that Tyrone never laid a finger on her. In fact, it was her using him as the punch bag. So she did make the whole thing up? Yeah. She admitted that she fell down the stairs. <sighs> and that Tyrone is totally innocent. Tyrone and Fizz are never going to forgive me. Well, you were pretty hard on them. Well, let's face it, you weren't the only one taken in by her. Oh, yeah, but I was a champion. I was cheerleader for Team Kirsty. While all the time, poor Tyrone and Fizz were treated like liars and cheats. I feel so ashamed. Yeah, well, you and me both. Just let him go. I mean, we all heard it. So does this mean that we don't have to give evidence? Right, so Ruby's fine. She's with a social worker. They'll not take her into care. No, it doesn't sound like it. Kirsty can nominate someone to look after her. Oh, what's going on? One does wonder why Tyrone failed to alert the authorities if indeed Kirsty was the aggressor. One might if one had no imagination. Anyway, no one really knows what goes on between two people except them. I still can't believe she stood there and admitted everything. Maybe she has got a conscience after all. Well, if she has, you'd think it had a pricks here before now, after all she's put Tyrone through. Where is he? Oh, excuse me, where's Tyrone? Can you tell us when he's going to be released? I'm sorry. Oh, well, been talking to him in there for ages. Like I said, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't say. Why not? I mean, she admitted that she made it all up. How long does it take to sign a few papers? It's not quite as simple as that, I'm afraid. How do you mean? The fact is, as it stands, Tyrone remains accused of a crime. Yeah, that he didn't commit. It's complicated, and to be honest, none of us knows how this is going to play out. Look, I've got to go. Excuse me. You do understand that you'll be arrested and taken to the police station for questioning. All the times I said he hurt me, I was the one hurting him. He never even defended himself, never retaliated, just took it for months. He didn't push me down the stairs, he... I fell, just like he said. So why have you chosen now to change your story? My baby. Ruby. And have you been violent towards Ruby? You're sure? But I get angry at it. It's like it builds, you know? I can feel it. I can feel it taking over, and I know I'm, I'm going to explode, just... just like I did when I attacked our own. I felt it today. With my beautiful Ruby. And what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened, I, I swear. But I'm scared that next time it might. I'm scared that if she stays with me, I might hurt her. I love her so much, that's why I'm doing this. I, I can't be like my dad was. I can't have Ruby scared like I was. I need you to lock me up for my daughter's sake. One of the things said by Miss Soames in the interruption of this trial, I'm going to discharge you from returning a verdict. May I thank you for your attention to the case? Would you please leave court with the usher? Have the prosecution made a decision about these proceedings? Yes, Your Honour. 
By reason of the declaration made by Miss Soames in the face of the court, which she has now put into writing, the Crown is satisfied that these allegations against Mr Dobbs are without foundation. Therefore, the prosecution will offer no evidence on all charges. Does the defence have anything to say? No, Your Honour. Could my client be discharged? Very well. I shall return verdicts of not guilty on all three charges. Mr Dobbs, you are now free to go. Truly wonderful. <laughs> I can't stop crying. Oh, well, that's a relief for all that. Yeah, at least it is a joy, yeah. Oh, did you see Tyrone's face? Oh, well, did you be coming out by now? Um, uh, just asked the usher guy. He says he got to be formally discharged from his cells. And I um, asked about Ruby as well. He said he didn't know anything. Oh, oh. you lot, you don't have to wait. It could be ages yet. Yeah. I reckon she wants us to make ourselves scarce so she can do that romantic Hollywood star reunion. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. No, no, to be honest. I just want to go home and get some sleep. Oh, well, at least you'll be sleeping next to Tyrone tonight, eh? Okay? <laughs> Look, you lot, I want to say thank you, all of you. I couldn't have done this without you. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, if anyone deserves a bit of happiness right now, it's Tyrone. Oh, no. Maybe he's got it now that he's with Fizz, eh? Yeah. <laughs> right, well, uh. Oh, that's... yeah, okay. It's been a good day. It was a good day, yeah. Right, I'll. Oh, yeah. Alright, see you. See ya. Hey, Tina, what? Oh, hi. How'd it go? Well, Tyrone's free to come home. So... No way, how come? <laughs> what is long story? Well, how about I take you for a drink in the bistro and you can tell me all about it? Because it is out with the mates anyway. Yeah. Sounds like just what I need. Oh, right, nice one. Fizz! I can't believe it. I know. I thought any minute now someone was going to come and say it had all been a mistake. I thought she'd change the story again. I know. But now look how I stood here without having to worry about getting caught. <laughs> I couldn't have done any of this without you. I'll never forget what you did. You saved me. If I saved you, mm -hmm. at least when you saw you could save me. I'm just glad that evil Count finally admitted what she's really like. And it couldn't come at a better time. I tell you, I was terrified in that stand. I just hope I never have to go through that again. Yeah, me too. <laughs> What? That's just kind of stressful. You said yourself you were terrified. It can't be good for you or the baby, can it? I hate to say this, but you're beginning to sound like your mum. Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> no, in a good way, in a good way. Oh, I just think you're taking on too much. You've got to look after yourself. What? No, it's just nice, you know? So that's the one who's interested in what happens to me. It's been a while. Thank you. Uh, no need to thank me. We're mates. I know, and baby aside, Coming friends with you and Izzy is the best part of this whole surrogacy thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, as long as you know I'm here, if you need me. I'm sorry, I'm just panicking. <sighs> is she all right? She's fine. Come on. Of course. Hello, sweetheart. Is your daddy? We're placing Ruby in your care, and you'll receive a letter in due course. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. See ya. Hey, you got your daughter back. Hey, darling. All those times when I was sat in that cell, I thought I'd never see her again. Yeah, well, it's over now. And everything's gonna be all right. It's just us now. Us three and hope, okay? Let's go home.